Lady Mary Seymour. You know what they say, fourth time's a charm, as Dowager Queen Catherine had been married three times before with no recorded signs of pregnancy. But when she married Thomas Seymour, she fell pregnant almost right away. To say it was a difficult pregnancy is a bit of an understatement. Catherine was 36, which is very old in Tudor times to be embarking on your first pregnancy. In the middle of her pregnancy, she caught her husband kissing her stepdaughter, Princess Elizabeth. There's a lot more to this story, but not for this video. And she had to deal with her husband's frustrations at being not as powerful a figure as he would have liked. To mark a fresh start, Catherine wanted to make one of her husband's homes in the countryside her main residence, Sudley Castle. Both parents had assumed it would be a boy, but after a long labour, a little girl was born. They named her Mary after Catherine's stepdaughter, the Princess Mary. Even though she wasn't the required boy, her father wrote letters remarking on her beauty. The joy was sadly short-lived as Catherine began to succumb to the infamous killer, childbed fever. She ranted in her delirium about how she had been badly handled by those around her, especially her husband. She died on the 5th of September, 1548. Thomas fell into deep mourning for his wife, but still wanted to ensure Mary had all the trappings of being a royal babe that she was. Her nursery at Sudley was supposed to be spectacular. Things did not go well for Thomas Seymour, and he was eventually confined to the tower prior to being executed in March 1549. In this time, Mary Seymour was sent to live with a great friend of her mother's, Catherine Brandon, the Dowager Duchess of Suffolk. As Mary's mother was dead and her father executed for treason, any titles, land and money Mary had were forfeit to the crown. Therefore, to keep Mary on the estate worthy of a daughter of a queen, it fell to the Duchess of Suffolk, and she was none too pleased with it. Eventually, after a bit of a struggle, Mary had her properties and land restored to her in 1550. Mary then effectively disappears from all records at just two years old. Some people take it to mean she died of a childhood malady, others say she was hidden away due to the fact her uncle Edward Seymour was also executed. Catherine Parr's chaplain, John Parkhurst, wrote this epitaph, and some people think it's about Mary. I whom, at the cost of her own life, my queenly mother, bore with pangs of labour, sleep under this marble. An unfit traveller, if death had given me to live longer, that virtue, that modesty, that obedience of my excellent mother, that heavenly courageous nature would have lived again in me. If she did die, and that was her epitaph, I wonder if she was taken to be buried with her mother. Catherine Parr's tomb had a very famous afterlife, and a child's coffin hasn't ever been mentioned, but it certainly doesn't mean it's impossible. Alison Weir also focuses on Mary Seymour in the shadow of the Queen's novel, and it's absolutely fantastic. I would highly recommend a read.